Hi, my name is Lenar Whitney, and I'm running for Congress here in Louisiana's 6th Congressional District. And that fact has people rolling in the aisles laughing. They did a poll. There's 12 candidates currently for that position. You know what she came in on that poll ranked as? Number 16 out of 12. She is that popular. Political analyst David Wasserman called her the most frightening candidate he has ever interviewed in seven years of interviewing House candidates. Over 300 of them. And this la I, I was going to say lady, but I don't think that applies. Um, um, I could be wrong. Is the most frightening? Good gods, that's hilarious! I'm a state representative from HOMA, and many call me the most conservative member of the Louisiana legislature. Actually, they call her the most batshit crazy lunatic member. She just kind of translated that into conservative. She appears to think their identical meaning. I'm a constitutionalist and I believe our natural rights to life, liberty, and happiness. That's right, she is a constitutionalist even though she has no idea what the United States Constitution has to say about the powers uh, granted to the United States President which she flat out insisted in her previous video that President Obama was not allowed to do what he is actually allowed to do and he she also demanded that President Obama do something that the United States Constitution mandates that he not do but other than that by golly she's a constitutionalist come directly from God not from government I believe in the Second Amendment and I'm a lifetime NRA member and I have my own concealed carry permit that's right, and by golly, if I lived in Louisiana, it wouldn't frighten the shit out of me at all, knowing that this person has a handgun walking around with it concealed. Wouldn't bother me a bit. I have fought tirelessly to reduce gun regulations in the Louisiana legislature. You want to reduce gun legislation inside Louisiana legislature. Um, does that include the security guards at the door? Let's hope not. I'm 100% pro-life and... You're 100% pro-life, but you're also 100% pro-handguns. Huh? You can be either pro-life or you can be pro-gun. You can't really be both. Pick one. Co-authored legislation this past session that will cause abortion clinics to close down. In Washington, I will lead the charge to defund Planned Parenthood. Doesn't that make you pro-death? If you defund Planned Parenthood, a hell of a lot of people are going to die. A hell of a lot of people are going to have abortions that they would not normally have because, by golly, Planned Parenthood prevents abortions by giving other services such as contraception. And when somebody does have a baby, Planned Parenthood helps that person bring that... Uh, fetus to term to actually have a baby that is healthy and strong and mentally sound. If you defund Planned Parenthood, doesn't that make you a batshit, crazy, homicidal, sociopathic lunatic? And you call yourself pro-life? I believe Obamacare was one of the worst ideas in American history. So, if you object to the Affordable Care Act, that makes you pro-death, not pro-life. It is demonstrably true that the Affordable Care Act is saving human lives in the United States. And at a bargain rate. 
which is probably why you are against it because it's saving human lives and it's costing Americans less by golly and it was the United States Republican Party that came up with the idea the American Heritage Foundation a hyper right-wing think tank came up with the idea for the Affordable Care Act golly how dare they and it must be repealed immediately because it's saving too many human lives only the free market can drive down the cost of health care huh I don't get that either the Affordable Care Act has already lowered the cost of health care in the United States it's already saving human lives in the United States the Affordable Care Act does not regulate health care industry. The Affordable Care Act regulates the health care insurance industry. Two totally different things entirely. I strongly oppose Common Core because a nationalized curriculum is a bad idea. That's right. Educated voters would never vote for you or people like you. Therefore, it is a terrible, terrible idea. Yeah, I don't think the federal government has any role in education. The United States Constitution Amendment 14 applies to education and the federal government mandating that all citizens get a similar amount and similar quality of education in each state under its Equal Protection Clause. A constitutionalist would know that fact. In fact, I think we should just close the Department of Education. And while we're at it, let's close the Department of Energy, too. That's right. United States doesn't need any energy. Fuck energy. You know what's happening to Louisiana, the state that this woman has inflicted herself upon? A hell of a lot of it is going underwater. One minor cause, but it's still a fucking huge one. The sea level is rising due to the anomalous warming due to human causes. And the larger part is the oil industry is pumping oil out from under the Mississippi Delta, which is causing the whole fucking southeast end of Louisiana to fucking sink up to 50 square miles a year at the moment it is around 16 miles 16 square miles of Louisiana being lost every single year due to human activities all due to energy consumption and use and production so by golly, let's just close down the Department of Energy. We want to make the whole United States just like Louisiana. Eventually, there won't be a United States. It'll be like Atlantis. And let's greatly reduce the size and authority of the EPA. So we could all choke to death on our own shit. We should also abolish the IRS. And she calls herself conservative. The treacherous targeting of Tea Party groups is the last straw. Yeah, as soon as that happens, do complain. Let's simplify the tax code and use the existing state revenue departments for collection. Spending is out of control in Washington. Actually, in the past four years, discretionary spending, which is a key indicator of how much the government is spending and on what, has sharply decreased the spending of the previous eight years before Obama administration started was wild and out of the control for the past four and five years spending by the United States federal government is actually under very good control I believe in Reagan's doctrine of peace through strength seriously Ronald Reagan you know, out of the eight years that he was president of the United States, physicians think he was senile for at least five of those eight years. And you're holding up Ronald Reagan as a model of what you believe is an ideal president 
or politician, a senile batshit babbling idiot? Seriously? America must have a strong national defense. Crazy lady actually came up with a good idea, which I agree 100%. We dismantle the current United States offensive military industrial complex and we build a national defense. It would cost a hell of a less lot of money than what is currently spent on national offense. Maybe if we converted to national defense, President Obama would stop bombing brown-skinned people with drones. That strikes fear into evildoers throughout the world. That's right. You know, I know um, several people internationally. I have friends. Um, Belgium. I know two people in Belgium. I know um, in Norway. I know a person who lives in Denmark. I know several people who live in Sweden. They are terrified of the United States military. You know, there are only other people besides good, decent, harmless people out there who are terrified of the United States military. United States citizens are generally fucking terrified of the United States military. Nobody else out there, no evildoers are frightened of the United States military. We must stand with Israel 100% in their war against Hamas. Oops! Here I thought you'd claim to be pro-life. Not just in rhetoric, but as a strong ally. You mean the United States military should start bombing Palestinians, slaughtering little babies sleeping in their cribs? Well, they can't sleep because of all the fucking bombs raining down upon them. Pro-life? Seriously? Only by reducing the size and scope of government can we put America back on the path to freedom and prosperity. Oddly enough, a hell of a lot of political and social indicators show that oh, President Obama has been doing that for the past five or six years or so. Tell me, how does bombing Palestinians in Gaza and elsewhere in any way help the United States become free and prosperous? Please explain that to us. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. 